Chris Courtney here for New Pragmatic. Thank you so much for taking a moment out of your day to join me for this short video on wireframing with Figma. Figma is one of my favorite tools that, that has come along in the past few years, and it's because of the flexible nature of the platform and the fact that you can use it pretty much anywhere that you want to use it because it is browser-based. What we're gonna be doing today is leveraging a template provided by Figma to begin building your first wireframes. The key to this is good file organization, and we're gonna be covering some tips on, on how to best organize your file so that it is updatable as you begin to add fidelity to the design. What starts out as a wireframe with Figma can grow into your high fidelity prototype later if you organize your files the right way. Let's start our process by going to figma.com slash templates in any browser that you like. What you'll find at that address is a lot of different templates that are available, pairing Facebook ads, user stories, just about anything you can imagine. What we're gonna focus on is the wireframe kit. To get started, I'm just gonna simply click get this template. And as you can see, it takes you to a product page where it gives you an idea of what's inside of this template. You can create prototypes. You do get pre-built wireframes and uh, people can leave feedback on these files, which is always helpful when you're collaborating with the team. I'm gonna go ahead and say, get this template for free. And now it has opened this up and made it available for me to use. We're gonna spend quite a bit of our time over here in this left-hand panel. As you can see, there are a number of pages that are listed here. So we have start, which at this point is actually all the components that are available to you that are pre-built. Build your own and build your own uh, simply is giving you instructions for how to construct your wireframes. And then an examples page to show you some of the things that you could do with your wireframe. If you click over to assets, you'll see the components that are available to you and they're organized buttons and cards, CTA, features, footer, etc. It's important to pay close attention to how these are organized. As you go through, you'll see something like buttons and cards and you may want to create your own buttons and cards. It's important to realize that over here in the pages, if we go back to start, you'll have, you'll see buttons and cards right here. And if we zoom in on this area, what you'll notice is that the assets that were available before, primary button, secondary button, card, card pricing, card square, those are all present here in the same organization as they are in the assets panel. And as you click around here, you'll see those elements illuminate. If I wanted to add a, a special button to my wireframing components, I could do it by adding it to this particular frame. For instance, if I added a rectangle and I said that this was, I'm gonna go back to layers. If I said this one was called just hover, I'll go ahead and make a component out of it by clicking the create component button at the top. Now this is a component, but where it will show up in assets is in buttons and cards because I created it on the buttons and cards frame. That's a really useful thing for file organization. It's harder to organize these if this hover is not on that page. And as you see, I, dr I dragged it out of the buttons and cards frame, but when it's outside of that, it'll just show up by itself. When it's actually on a frame, it moves right back in. Obviously, this isn't a component that we need, so let's go ahead and delete that away. Let's go back to our layers. It's great that everything is so nicely organized to begin with in this template. Yes, you can build your own. And if you look at the instructions here, if you want it to open the components panel, which is no longer constructed in this manner, it's simply up here with assets. So that is no longer applicable. Um, you drag the necessary component that you want to use to the page. I'm just going to drag see more to the page. And now that is on a canvas. And then you drag that component into a particular frame. This is great, but I don't really want this to be part of my wireframe. The same thing for examples. I can look at this 
and I don't necessarily want to delete it away, but I also don't want to include it in my wireframe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename these pages just a little bit. So I'll call this one instructions. I'll call this one components. So that's really what it is. Those are the components. And this is examples. So I'm going to create another page. And this page will be wireframe. And this wireframe I'm going to drag all the way to the top so that it shows up in it as the first thing. And I also am going to rename this file. And I'm going to move this. This will be moved to my tutorials. So I've moved it there. If I go over here and I go to back to files, you can see that I have a tutorial project. And in that tutorial project, I have this wireframe example. I'll go ahead and click on this. And as you can see, there's literally nothing on the screen right now. That's because we need to begin by creating frames for our project to, to live on. Um, I'm gonna do that by selecting the frame tool. And I'm gonna go ahead and select desktop because we're gonna be building a desktop wireframe. That desktop wireframe is set up at 1440 by 1024, which means it's a little deeper than the screen that I'm on right now. It's going to be, need to be significantly deeper than that because we are making a homepage wireframe in this example. And one thing I want to focus on really quickly is, is how nice it is that Figma has created a lot of plug and play assets for us to use right away. If I come over back over to components and let's go to navigation really quickly. So let's zoom in here. If I click on any of these components, what you, you'll notice right away is that the width of the, this component is 1440. That happens to be the exact same width as my wireframe. And this is gonna be, um, I'm gonna rename this as landing page. It's always really good to get ahead of yourself with the naming conventions. So with that in mind, I'm gonna come to assets and I know that I'm gonna need a navigation to go across the top of this. And this navigation matches up pretty closely with what I have in mind, because I can see it from the small preview there. And when I drag it in, it snaps into place because it has the right width. So this, this right now, so it has links in here, it has a sign up button, it has this um, logo off to the side. That's not exactly what I need up here at the top though. And I do always encourage people to focus on using real content with their design work. I'm gonna go ahead and replace some of this information. And while this is a component, these elements are replaceable. I can click in there, I can actually get access to it. This is an instance of that component. If I really needed complete control over this component, I could always come over and detach instance right here. I can also swap it with another instance that's available to me. In this particular instance, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this back to navigation center. Now, because I already have content available to me, I'm gonna go ahead and bring that in. There's obviously a problem here. I need the ability to put more links here in the navigation. So this is a situation where I need to detach the instance. And what this will allow me to do is come through and make and adjust this as, as needed. Okay, so what we've done now is we've updated this to, to match the navigation that we intend to use throughout our site. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. This says Navigation Center. I'm gonna call this Company Nav. I'm going to copy this entire thing. I'm gonna go back to my components. I'm gonna paste it into this navigation. And as you can see, there's some slight differences between it. And now I'm going to save this as a component. And that component is now going to be available to me to pull back into my wireframe. So instead of using this, I'm gonna delete that away. I'm gonna to go to assets and I'm gonna see company nav. 
and now I've got I've got this available to me. The reason this is important is if I decide to make a change anywhere else on the project, so let's go ahead and let's duplicate this landing page and let's say that now I'm on the um, or I'm on the about company page. So I'm now on the about company page and I've decided that I want a different color for the background. I can come back to my components. I can grab this company logo and then I can say, I want this background instead of being EEE, -E -E, I want it to be significantly darker than that. So I'll say AAA, that makes it darker. I come back over to my wireframe and now those are both darker because I've made that change at the component level. That isn't something I actually want to stand, so I'm gonna undo that, save it again, come back to wireframes. But that is one of the reasons why it's nice to have that component created and available, is so that when you create these customizations of the wireframe assets, it's really easy to update because it's all there as a proper component and you're not updating one element after another, after another, after another. This also could be changing the font or adding an image. If you did it as a component, it's going to automatically update across your site. And that's one of the really genius reasons to utilize components rather than going through and making these things all individually. To get us moving along, I'm going to go ahead and pull in the rest of the content so that you can see how I would construct this just utilizing the assets that are made available by the wireframe.
this wireframe, this is basically just uh, any old average landing page. It's got several different sections to it. It's got a hero here at the top. It's got a, a number of products that it offers. It has some features. It has some insights from the company. Essentially, all the content that would be on the homepage is here. You probably noticed some common patterns as I was working through this. If I came upon a piece of the puzzle that I could just pull over from the wireframe that was provided, I did that. I did that a lot with the buttons and cards, particularly the buttons. I also did quite a bit. I pulled over the hero. We got the nav out of this. But there were also a lot of things that I went ahead and created from scratch. The features, elements, the blurbs, if you will. I also created some product cards here as well. And I placed those, uh, the feature card. I also created these blog post blurbs. Those were things that I, I created. And what I would typically do is I would come in, I would create the original to, cut, to kind of get the sizing right. Then I would sanitize it. So, I, you know, while I knew the content was going to be this, I would sanitize it so I could use it over and over and over again. And then I would pull it out, delete it away from where I created it, come over to the components page and place it on the proper page or frame. If you get into the practice of making your wireframes with components and then reusing those components, you can build customized wireframes very quickly while also leveraging the built-in assets that Figma is providing to you just by using this template. I hope this short video was helpful for you in seeing how you can utilize the layer palette, the assets palette, and the pages of Figma for better wireframing. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. You'll get updates when I'm posting new videos and live streaming. Otherwise, thanks for joining me.